Don't just wait around for a customer to respond. Guys, you're not being paid to stand around, you're being paid to shop at that time. That's how you're making your money. What's up guys? So today we're gonna have a chat about Coles shop and deliver orders in Australia on DoorDash. I see a lot of people saying some things, they got some misconceptions around it, uh, and mostly around the pay structures for them. I just see people saying, yeah, man, I just got paid like $20 for one item, and they're all like hyped about it. Then I asked them, I'm like, how many kilometers did you do? And they're like, well, what do you mean? That is a very important part of this. It's not just about one item. It's about how much you get paid for all the little steps in the process of the delivery, and it can be broken down. So today in this video, I'm gonna have a chat to you guys about breaking down how orders are constructed for our pay, and we're gonna have a chat about um, the specifics around shop and deliver. So, first and foremost, let's have a look at the general pay structure for a DoorDash delivery order. So you have your base as one factor to it, you have your distance in Australia as another factor for it, you have your peak, and then you have your desirability factor. And then finally, for shop and delivers is an extra thing to factor in. So your fifth factor for shop and delivers is the per item payment for it. Let's have a run through on each one. So the base pay is an initial value that DoorDash may offer for you taking an order regardless of anything else involved. So in Australia, that's anywhere from $0 to I've seen about $4 on a base pay offer. It used to be $4 when I started. I was like, yeah, beauty. Uh, back the glory days when we earned a lot. Uh, now it's trying to be smarter uh, to try to get ahead. But base, zero to four dollars, depending on your area and what they've applied. So that's nothing you can control yourself. That's what DoorDash sets for your area, what your base pay is. Outside of the base pay, then we look at uh, the distance. So I base the distance off one dollar per kilometer. So we have our base pay, zero to four dollars plus one dollar per kilometer and that's what we decide our decisions around. So we're gonna figure out some acceptance criteria here too, guys. Uh, the next little bit that we have a look at is peak. So you have peak pay on, maybe there's an extra dollar per order, dollar fifty per order, add that on top as well. So that's a bonus thing. Then desirability, that's another factor. So when I say desirability, and this is once again, a common misconception when we break down orders and what it looks like, people think desirability means it's like really good and like, you know, you take it because it pays good. No, desirability is the amount of times that an order's been turned down by drivers. So you gotta think of it in the inverse. This order is unattractive. Therefore, DoorDash adds a little bit more money on to make it more desirable, and they keep adding more and more money on each time it gets knocked back through a few drivers, or as time goes on too long uh, to keep the customer happy, um, they add it on to make it more desirable. Um, it's not that it's a good order because it's desirable, it's because so many drivers have knocked it back because there's something wrong with it for them, uh, which means uh, that desirability increases the pay. And the final factor is the pay per item for a Coles shop and deliver order, or you know, down the track, there'll be more franchises, more places that open up that do shopping as well. So, but at this point, we're just basing it off Coles shopping in Australia. Uh, so. I found out how much it is, and I think this is a bit of a slip up from them for revealing it, but works to our advantage. So I figured it out, share it with you guys. Um, so I figured this out because I was doing a shop and then the customer added on one more item through the shop. So I had the screenshot of accepting the order and I had the screenshot after I finished it where it said one item was added with the new pay adjusted and it's 36 cents per item. Now with that information, we can reverse engineer through. We can say, cool, each item from Coles is worth 36 cents. So uh, every 10 items is $3.60, every 20 items is $7.20. Hey guys, have you done your, your $3.60 timetables? At $3.60 times two, $7.20, times three, $10.40, times four is $14 something. And that's, that's the whole point, guys. So it's not easy to calculate. Um, someone, someone out there is probably like, like yeah, come on mate, it's, uh, it's $14.60, get it together. 
Is it 1460? I don't know. Leave it, leave it down below in the comments. Um, on the fly maths. Quick math, bruv. Quick math. And I've seen it several other times in the DoorDash Australia group where people have also indicated uh, 36 cents. So I think that's where we're down to 36 cents per item. Let's try to figure out are shop and delivers worth it in the first place. So let's look at the, the minimum wage in Australia. So it's $23.23 or if you include superannuation, which the companies need to pay if you're on a minimum wage, uh, we're at $25.78 on a 17% super fee, which means that per hour, if you're being paid 36 cents per item, you need to be shopping and putting into your trolley 71 items per hour. Uh, and that also probably includes as well like your checkout time and loading groceries to the car time. So your shop and deliver time, um, yeah, 71 items per hour and then you're gonna lose five minutes for like checking out and loading to the car. So the five minutes of free time, let's call it that way. Let's, let's not complicate the maths here. Um, so question is, can you you watching right now when you go out shopping and delivering are you doing one item every 50 seconds which is 71 items per hour can you do that because when you finish your shop it tells you the average time per item is it at 50 seconds if it's above 50 seconds your time is valued below minimum wage at that point so you need to be shopping faster now you might think oh like 50 seconds per item like let's be honest here and let's be real so the people who do this job you know that maybe you will get 10 tins of cat food maybe you'll get five bananas maybe you'll get three punnets of strawberries so you get multiples that isn't going to take you 50 seconds per can of cat food you pick one up you scan it you go cool scanned then you pick up the other nine are you going to take 50 seconds per can no you're not uh, it's going to take you a lot lower time, which means you're going to get ahead of the average there of that 50 seconds per item. Now, 50 seconds per item, that puts you on minimum wage. Where you want to get to, where you want to be, is where the absolute guns of this are. And guys, I'm not a gun at shopping right now, okay? Um, I want to get there eventually, uh, but I know there are people out there doing it at 25 seconds, 30 seconds per item. These guys, absolute mavericks in the coals. They know it backwards and forwards. They know exactly where to go. So um, if we're looking at uh, 50 cents per, uh, 50 seconds per item, 50 seconds per item at a coals brings you to minimum wage. These guys doing 25 seconds per items. They're running at $50 an hour for their time shopping. They're absolutely killing it out there on the field. So when we start looking at it, is it worth it doing the cold shop and delivers? Yes, it is, if you are shopping fast. Now, if you're shopping slower than 50 cents per item, why do I keep saying cents? 50 seconds per item, uh, for 36 cents per item, of course. Um, if you're shopping slower than 50 seconds per item, right now you're earning less than minimum wage for your time when you factor it across, for the time shopping. Now you need to get faster. So how do you get faster? Well, practice makes perfect. Practice improves speed. Um, I, I guess maybe another little side hack is if it's a local Coles you always shop from, what you can do from there is um, you can, in your own time, go shopping at that Coles. Learn the lay of the land. Learn it all a little bit better. Like, where is it all around? You can figure it out, man. Um, so go out there shopping your, in your downtime for your own groceries to learn the lay of the land. Uh, you know, sabotage Woolworths for once in your life. Uh, and try the dark side. Go where the prices are down, down. But of course, we can get tripped up as well is substitutions from customers. So this can throw a real spinner in the works. So currently, DoorDash has made it a little bit easy for us drivers. There are prompted substitutions through. Now I understand the customers are like, oh, but I never picked any substitutions. Thing is for them customers, they are prompted heavily at the end of their pickup saying, we've substitutions for you, sir. Would you like to review them? And it, guys, I've done my groceries through Coles on DoorDash a couple of times now just to make sure it all works smooth, see how it all works. It is so easy, guys. They pretty much recommend three items per item that they've shopped for as a substitution. And as the customer, you can just click um, remove substitutions just by removing the check marks, or you can request to be contacted, or you can be requested 
uh, well, you can request a refund for the item and just go through each item that you shot for. It takes just a couple of seconds for each one to quickly adjust it and then you do your final submit through. But now when everything's unavailable or they have, you know, been difficult and said, I just want to be contacted if something's not available, like from the get-go, that's where it can slow things down. So if you are doing substitutions for a customer, um, two things to know. One, if the customer does not reply by the time that you've completed uh, shopping for everything else, uh, you just got to proceed to check out. It's, it's all done and dusted. You don't need to worry about it. Once you checked out, it's the customer's fault. They can't turn around to you on the drive and be like, well, can you do this now? It's like, it's too late. They had plenty of time. Um, even if they don't have plenty of time, you kind of rush through it all uh, on them because they didn't set their substitutions up in the first place. They were too lazy. It's on them. Now, the second thing to know and note as well, if you are uh, shopping and then it hits the substitution point and messages the customer out, don't stand around like a wood duck just waiting for a customer to respond. Keep shopping, dude. Keep shopping. Move on to the next item. Keep going and going. If there's another substitution required, fine. It'll text the customer again saying, hey, this is out of stock. Keep going. Keep shopping. Uh, and then if the customer hasn't responded by the end and you've shopped everything else, cool. Proceed to check out. Finish the order off. Hit the road and get across to them finish it through. Don't just wait around for a customer to respond. Guys, you're not being paid to stand around, you're being paid to shop at that time. That's how you're making your money. And you need to be above the 50 seconds per item. And do you think you're gonna be above 50 seconds per item if you're just standing around in the middle of the cold food section? You're like, I wonder if they'll message me back. Just like some what have I got? teenage kid, man. Like He's like, will my girlfriend message me today? Yes or no? Maybe she will. Maybe I'll message them again. Uh, why aren't they responding to me? You sad. What have I got? Just keep shopping, dude. Just keep moving on. Okay? Um, you're in it to make money here. You're not in it for customer service. Let DoorDash worry about the customer service. Just do the job, get the items, drop it off. That's, guys, that's literally all you need to do. That is the, the, the aim of the game. It's the aim of the game, guys process through orders as fast as you can. So when it comes to our acceptance criteria, I'm gonna do this very short and sharp for you guys. So first and foremost, you need to shop fast. If you cannot shop at a rate of 50 seconds per item on the average, if you cannot do that, you are not willing to put the time into learning to do that. If you cannot uh, do it, you know, um, physically, okay? A anyone with a disability that can't do it physically, you need to either accept that you're valuing your time at less than minimum wage. Uh, well, that's pretty much it. Um, you're just working at a rate less than minimum wage. So you need to be happy with that. You can't complain about it afterwards um, if you are. Alternatively, just do restaurant deliveries, okay? Um, now, secondly, when we are breaking the orders down, $1 per kilometer, 36 cents per item. That's our two knowns, and that's our minimum absolute floor. So if we get $1 per kilometer, 36 cents per item, those two things there, that is the absolute minimum, that is the absolute floor to this. That means there's no base, there's no peaks, and uh, no drivers have been declining this beforehand, which means there's no desirability factor added onto it. This should be the absolute minimum standard, guys. And if it comes in below that, yeah, decline it 100%. And even these, I would like, like half like lean towards like declining it if it's a busy day. Like, you know what? You're trying to screw me here. There should be some base in here because right now you're paying me zero dollar base. Uh, there's no peak on here and there's no desirability factor added. Now, you know, realistically, like for a base, you should be looking like, you know, uh, you know, four dollars base, three dollars base or something like that. Maybe it's been knocked back a couple of times, so maybe there's an extra dollar or two or three dollars on it. Because, uh, like, realistically, guys, some people don't do shop and deliver orders. They're, they're like, I don't want to do it. Um, and they haven't had the option in the past to disable it in the app. Currently, there's a new feature out where you can turn on just restaurants or shop and deliver or have them both on at the same time or turn them both off and just kind of sit there and do nothing. Not sure why that option exists, but hey, it's there anyway. You can just sit there and chill. <laughs> but um, yeah, so some people decline the shop and delivers because they don't have that feature turned on and it might be in your zone right now, um, which means the desirability pay goes up for it because they're never going to accept it. Uh, it's been knocked around a few times between people who only do restaurant deliveries and reaches you and you knock back a couple of times, maybe it's an extra dollar or two. So 
you know, that's great. Um, but also as well, you need to understand your minimum standard. So my minimum standard for a delivery is $8. So I need to make $8, eight delivery dues on a delivery uh, because I can only do, you know, like I can do about three and a half per hour um, if I'm just going back to back, sometimes four per hour. Um, you know, five is the absolute record. And even if you are getting an offer for $8, you know, that sure as heck better be like one or two items going for like two kilometers or under. Like super small, super short, $8, then moving on from there. Um, you know, you're not taking a 10 kilometer trip doing 20 items for eight dollars no because uh one less than a dollar per kilometer you're knocking it back uh and two just that amount of items doesn't make sense um at 36 cents per item doing 20 of them uh, up to seven dollars 20 which means that what 80 cents for your kilometers no ridiculous um so guys yeah think about it what what are your acceptance criteria around shop and delivers what do you guys look for I, I just want to kind of have this conversation and bring it out there because there's a lot of people that are looking at it a, a per item delivery and ignoring the kilometers um, that's not the right way to look at these you need to factor your kilometers your base the amount of items the peak the desirability factor to it you need to factor the five things for a shop and deliver order so what do you guys think leave it down below in the comments do you like doing shop and deliver orders um, what's the most painful thing about them have you been caught out on substitutions before have you had orders drop out and unassign have you <laughs> have you dealt with just the struggle of not being able to find such a niche specific item in a store and you're just walking around the aisles like where could this possibly be are the coals aisle numbers next to the items correct in your area what, what do you guys think? Um, what do you look for to accept the offer in the first place? What was your criteria? I'll kind of touch base around mine. I've talked about the factors. I don't want to be like, like you must take it exactly like this. Um, I just want to say like, you know, above $8 per order, guys, that, that's, you know, the minimum standards you should have for yourself, but just kind of understand how the order's broken down. Hopefully I've done an okay job explaining that today. So soak that information in. And let me know what your thoughts are around shop and delivers. Um, do you only do them exclusively? Or do you mix them in with restaurant orders? Or do you just flat out refuse to do them because you think they're a ripoff? Let me know down below in the comments. Uh, smash the, the like button. The like button makes me happy, makes Chris so happy because it's like, hey, people, people like this video. Um, so uh, for, for YouTube, each time someone presses the like button, 50 other people see it. So appreciate it if you can take that half second to click the little thing there but other than that guys um hopefully you got some valuable information out of this video hopefully it helps you to understand how these orders are put together and i'll see you in the next one peace out hi mate have you subscribed to chris yet of course i did the subscribe button is just down there did you know he's trying to get to 10,000 subscribers? 10,000? That's five times the size of Cooper Petey. Cooper Petey, mate. Cooper bloody Petey, mate. Cooper Petey, mate. Cooper bloody Petey. He's got some more videos over there, too. Over where? Just over there. Over here? Yeah, mate, that's them. Cheers, mate. I'll keep watching because there's always something new. And I'll see you in the next one. Who are your legends?